and we're back. So this is the last movie that I'm watching for VIF 2017. Close Knit, B-Man is here. Uh, got a props for uh, Master of the Universe for hooking up with those extra tickets so that I got someone to watch movies with, so that's always nice. So today is before and after for Close Knit, a Japanese film, and it's a Canadian premiere once again. I don't know the cast except for Toma Ikuta. I haven't seen him in a while, but another drama guy that I watched before, so pretty not excited to see how he's gonna fare in this movie. So just directed by Naoko Ogigami and uh, synopsis is uh, abandoned by her mom, Tween Tomo, needs a new place to live. Uncle Makio is glad to take her in but offers a gentle warning. His living partner is a bit unusual. She's played by Ikura Tomo, one of the Japanese hottest young stars and he's still a show with his no perfect turn. Interesting. So I'm gonna look forward to this. And um, that's right, girlfriend Winko is a trans woman, a surprise to Tomo and the source of her awakening in Naoko's Drama, gentle, sweet sold, and nuanced, softly lit family portrait variety. And it's won a Teddy Jury Award at Berlin 17 and an Audience Award in uh, Asian Film Festival in New York this year. So that's gonna be interesting for sure. That's stretching legs for Toma. He's pretty chill and cool. And it's, yeah, he was fun in Akihabara, uh, deep and stuff that I've seen. Again, there's like a huge line. There's a lot line for a Beautiful Star as well. I wonder if the whole Japanese crew is coming out nowadays. But um, yeah, so that's cool. Um, expectations, nothing much in terms of just real expectations. I didn't see the trailer. I was just really intrigued by the whole transgender sort of subject matter. I wonder how the Japanese will take this because I think with their social issues, ignorant view, I think, it's not a sort of like, oh, if you're gay, you can go out there and tell the world type of thing. It's pretty much hush-hush, I think, in terms of the like, Asian culture. But yeah, so looking forward to see how they deal with the whole transgender woman issue. So looking forward to that and just the chemistry and just the shots and all that stuff. So yeah, that's it. Uh, this is before and this is after. Wow, a lot of a lot of stuff in this. First off, cinematic wise, I really love the use of their of Rinko's home. It, it like the transition throughout the film where they use like the living room and then the dining room and it just builds this like really good place where they keep using and it just becomes sort of a safe haven for Tomo. And speaking of Tomo, props, props to the director to get just this young actress to go to the, I would say it's pretty deaf of emotion. A lot of uh, sort of bouncing back and forth. I mean, when she talks to her friend, it's like super casual and nonchalant. And then when she talks to Rinko, it's all trying to figure things out and then just all the anger that she has and yeah speaking of Rinko Ikuto, Ikuta to, Toma did a great job I mean at first it does come off as more of a dude playing a very feminine character but later on when you see more of him it becomes more authentic and just genuine and I mean the supporting cast is just there they do what they need to do it builds her case in terms of just how she has it in the Japanese world. I mean, Japan's culture is pretty masculine. They have a freaking penis festival where you ride a wooden penis for sort of like the chi or strength or something. So masculinity is a big thing. And I do wonder how this movie will do in Japan itself. I do should, I should look up the box office. But I think it's, it's great that, you know, um, Naoko, did this movie, I mean, in a very futuristic world, but yet it's still bounded by traditions and cultures where they just can't seem to understand when norms change, like, how do you respond? I mean, throughout the movie, you get different ex responses. We have Tomo's friend who's finding himself attracted to another boy, and then his mom just totally not supporting that and calling that strange and weird and not normal. And then whereas you have Rinko's mom who just accepts that his that her son is now want to be a daughter. And it's interesting because it does paint a different picture in a sense where in Vancouver we're very, you know, accepting of transgender, the LGBT, not very accepting, I mean accepting more so than other places. But in the sense where like the English language doesn't carry over in the whole feminine side, whereas in Japanese itself there is a feminine way of speaking. And it, I think it does makes you think about how you have to change your entire sort of way of expression just to really be yourself the 
of self that you think you are type of thing. I mean, the whole gay issue I have, I'm not going to talk about it here. But basically, it was a good social issue commentary on just how Japan's sort of like reacting to this. I mean, it's bound to happen. And it, it's, it's interesting because with Japan itself, you have all these androgynous like pop stars and they're just, they look like women and like no one really cares about that. But when, or when you have maid cafes and I don't know, it's, it's just an interesting sort of, sort of world where it is, there is a lot of femininity around, but yet when men sort of embrace that femininity, it's, it's frowned upon and they don't understand nor do they want to. So there's a lot of social commentary on that. So I do wonder how the Japanese themselves would take this movie. I do hope they can just see and see that the world is moving in that direction. And I mean, like granted, you can hate all you want, but like what are you supposed to do when your own son or daughter comes out and you're, and then what are you gonna do? Are you gonna say that they're the weird ones that, that you screwed up? You're gonna throw them out? What's going on? So these are thoughts to think about and I do wonder the Japanese if they're willing to think about these things. If you're Japanese and you're watching this, what did I want to comment? Like, how do you feel about the whole thing? But anyways, I enjoyed it. It was a good cast. Cast chemistry was there. I mean, seriously, the Japanese movie title is When They Knit Seriously. That's an awesome title. I mean, it's one of those like super long titles for a movie or book thing, but... And also the English name Close Knit was a very appropriate named movie in that translation. But granted, one thing that really bothered me was when they say Itadakimasu, they just translated Bon Appetit. I mean, I feel like the Japanese culture is far-fetched. I mean, far-ranging enough that Itadakimasu is very like synonymous to Japan eating. So I don't want to understand why they would translate that to Bon Appetit, which is French. And I feel that, I don't know, like Itadakimasu is much more than Bon Appetit in this sort of this context of like the audience anyways but anyways i enjoyed it for what it was it makes you think and props on just pushing boundaries for cinema and just uh, social commentaries and all that stuff so that's it this is before and after of close knit later